I kind of want to get your a little Mets, the state of the Mets, a little bit here as we kind of transition from wild card to, the, to from wild card to MVP to strictly your Mets here for a second. We're talked on a little bit, so I'm going to try to go on some different points. And we talked about Tuesday as well. I hate, hate the Giants the same way. I don't like the Giants either. It's definitely top three on my on my list as well. It might be number one. I had a sick history of not liking them, so we'll do that too. Rants were great today. <laughs> yes, they were. You got your guy pure attorney in tonight. Appreciate that, my friend as well. Uh, let's get to that. Your bets. So you obviously get off to a pathetic start, right? You were like looked upon as one of the most disappointing teams to even start the year, right? You guys were like, you, nothing's going to talk about it. where's this season go. And then you get, you get incredibly hot in June, July, you start playing well, maybe not incredibly hot in July, but still play solid baseball uh, the same way. And you kind of feels like teared off a little bit here as you kind of entered the middle of August, the dog days here a little bit. But since the second half, you know, you guys have been pretty good. Here's some of the numbers on the line. Six, you sit like we said, 62 and 59, still three games over, uh, over, uh, 500 there been good since June. You guys are a power hitting team as we've talked about in the past. Like, where do you feel like you guys are at, at this point? Like, I don't know, like, I guess I could put it to you. Like what, what has you most excited about this team? I know there's some negative things, but like, come on, like you're still right there in it. There's gotta be some positive with this team here. I mean, the positive is that when, when the Mets lineup is is firing on all cylinders, this is a top five offense in, in the league. I mean, let's be honest here. They've posted um, top five, maybe even borderline top seven numbers across the board. Um, the problem is the consistency, and that's what I always boil it down to with the New York Mets, right? Yeah. It seems like two or three guys are carrying this team at one time. They go cold, and then maybe one or two guys – carry them for the next couple of weeks. And that's the frustrating thing about it. And we always boil it down to this core. So you're right. hundred percent. The New York Mets are top three in home runs in the league, right? They're top five in a lot of other categories on base percentage OPS. I mean, probably right before this cold streak that they got, they kind of hit before the last 13 games, but the consistency factor is a problem. Now, if you ask anybody, and I've been talking Mets baseball this whole entire season, I've been talking Mets baseball last season too, and last season was the debacle. I'm a lot more confident in this offense than the starting rotation. So my thing is, is that if the Mets are going to actually make a serious run at this NL wild card, the rotation is going to do what they do. You just saw a Jose Quintana did today. <laughs> Unacceptable after getting a 5-0 lead. This offense was great though. But the thing is, we haven't seen this offense, right? The offense that we saw today and yesterday putting up nine runs, we haven't seen that consistently over the last, what, three weeks now, yep. ever since the second half started. So 100% agree with Bourbon and Baseball here. This team goes as the Mets go, yep. which is, has a lot of fans frustrated because Lindor's been great. He's been holding his end of the bargain. And he's had, like I said in our stream, right, that we did the post game a couple of days ago, Darren, he's had a lot of unfair criticism. But where's Brandon Nimmo? He carried this team at one point this season, but he's fallen off a cliff. Where's Pete Alonso in his contract year? He's not performing up to expectation. So what has me excited is the ceiling of this team is being a nightmare matchup for any opposing pitcher. That's the ceiling of this team. And that's what I look forward to day in and day out until they go out there and provide me consistent bad at bats and terrible at bats. But that's the ceiling of this team. I love this offense on paper. And this is where I will say the 2024 New York Mets are light years ahead of the 2022 New York Mets, even though I hate to compare the two rosters, this lineup is bar none better than a Mark Hanna lineup, an Eduardo <laughs> Escobar lineup, Tomas Nito, James oh, McCann gosh. lineup, Daniel Vogel back in 2022. It's light years ahead. Yeah. But where we run into issues is the consistency and also the starting pitching. And we don't have any star-studded names in this rotation. We're relying on bounce-back years from Sean Manai and Luis Severino. David Peterson, of all people, has been our best pitcher, yeah. right, ever since he's come off the I.L. So we're holding it together with the rotation, and credit to them, they've been holding it down given what this rotation is on paper. But the most exciting factor to me, especially during that hot streak that we saw them come back into this NL wildcard race after being 11 games down, 11 games under 500, I should say, is the offense. And if this is going to continue to be an exciting team down the stretch – the offense has to be a lot better than they have been in the last three weeks. 
it feels like that Senga injury. Uh, Adachi was the killer. It just feels like from if I was like a fan of the team, like I don't know. I'm guessing this is how you felt. Like, oh, we're so pumped. He's pitching well, and just a total gut punch. Like, I I don't know. You had to. I feel like that's where maybe that fan base lost a little, even more faith. A little. Is that still? You feel like that's true? Yeah, I mean, 100%. This rotation, like I said, started this year off with terrible news in Kodai Senga. Obviously, yeah. probably wasn't going to get him back or weren't going to get him back until the second half. Or maybe we were hoping for early June, late June, but he kind of got pushed back there and they didn't want to rush him. And then he had a fantastic start against the Atlanta Braves his first time out. And then he pulls, I think it was a calf strain, right, is what he went down with. And those are always tricky. And it's like deflating. Yeah. Because, you know, at that point, you know, you're already at a point where you have to sort of assess the rotation and what you have versus what you will need. And I'm sure David Stearns, as he was preparing for the deadline and everything, he was like, listen, you know, I hate and I hate this narrative, too. This is the most tiring narrative amongst this Mets team, this organization is like we're getting X, Y, Z back. That's almost like adding somebody at the yeah. deadline. Unquote. I yeah. hate that. Like I, you can never count on that because the situation that Kodai Senga had is something that you're going to run into often. And we had Jacob DeGrom, right? One of the best pitchers in our generation in franchise history. And he can never stay healthy. And we we're like, oh, well, it's like getting DeGrom back. It's like getting an arm at the deadline. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. That's so fair. I think that, right, we got Paul Blackburn. Ugh. Decent pickup, starting pitcher four, I think, right? You know him all too well. He's not going to wow you. And I He's think not that saving we're... your season. Yeah, yeah. He's not and saving we're... your season. No, not at all. And we were really missing a second pitcher at the deadline. So, like I said, what we got is what we got right now. This roster is going to be it the whole way through. We'll see what the September call-ups are when the roster expands from 26 to 28. But 100% there, and I agree with you, that Kodai Senga injury at the beginning of the season kind of deflated us, and especially when he came back and – had a stellar start against the Atlanta Braves his first time out. Um, that deflated us even more. Now he's I mean, it's was- definitely what you guys needed. You guys needed that little boost there. You needed the little momentum. Some a little pick me up there with it, uh, especially coming off that good streak there. Oh, now we get saying the back, like kind of keeps it rolling a little bit. That, so it, it definitely, and like you said, your pitcher is not, it's just not like Severino. I feel like he's burnt out a little bit here along the way. He did pitch well for you guys in the first half as well. Uh, Aaron brought up the third baseman that's been well uh, playing well for you guys uh, as well. What was what's his name there? Your guy, the third baseman, Ruby killed answers. us. So that, yep, he he had a Ruby good. Answers. Yeah, he he's been really good as well for you guys. So uh, I don't know. Like I feel like sometimes we're even harder on our own teams than we are like other teams, and we're not watching them every day. Like you see like the day to day stuff. So it's interesting to get your perspective on some of that. And we talked a little bit about it last night. Like so, I don't want to necessarily go down that angle in terms of like I know Pete Alonzo is going to be the big talk and all that going forward but he is the I your is it Ryan right the guy that you do the show with uh on, uh, on your show there Rob, Rob. Rob sorry Rob he 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 made the point today when I was listening about Alonzo and how a lot of it does fall on him like you were kind of saying he feels and like I, as a guy who wants to get paid that to me is he does have to fall a little bit more on him than maybe a Lindor where it's fair, but he's having an MVP season. He's going to be in the top five. You can't be mad about that. So as we're talking through this, as you kind of lead me to next year a little bit, let's say you even make the playoffs or even if you, I mean, win the World Series, whatever, we'll get there. But but obviously you, the way you're taught, there's holes in this team. And you know like the Soto fish is out there. You know all the angles that are coming. But where do you want this team to like really buckle down and like we need these areas? Like is it just like what what has to happen for you? Um, so we were actually on the round table show right before I got on, on this podcast right here with you. Um, and we were talking about, cause like a lot of people are focused on 2024 and a lot of people wanted David Stearns to sell out of the deadline to sort of make this team a perennial contender right this year. Yeah. And, um, David Stearns obviously did not do that. If you look at his off, uh, his, his deadline moves, right. He got a couple bullpen arms. Like I'm a fan of them. Brazabon, Maton, Stanek. Um, we got Jesse Winker, who I think is serviceable. He's not a three, four hitter as we've been utilizing him this first couple of weeks as a Met, but like he's a serviceable six, seven hitter. He's hitting about 300 as a New York Met right now. But 
it ultimately boils down to David Stearns, obviously taking over this organization as the president of baseball operations. I truly don't think with the baseball, I, I'd like to call him a baseball mastermind because I'm a big fan of what he did with the Milwaukee Brewers organization, obviously with yeah. less money work with over there in Milwaukee as opposed to what he has right now Steve Cohen in the New York Mets but I really do think that this offseason is going to provide the New York Mets fans in this fan base right with fireworks and a hesitancy to trade prospects right you talk about a quote-unquote revamped farm system right and I don't think it's as revamped as people make it out to be it's a great farm system don't get me wrong as in comparison to what it was but it's not like Oh wow, you uh, type of yeah. farm system, especially from the positional prospects, right? As opposed to the pitchers. But we made a trade with the Astros for JV, Max Scherzer with the Texas Rangers, et cetera. The Marlins even taking David Robertson. We had a good haul in return last MLB deadline. But what I will say is, is that I don't believe that David Stearns is a believer in this core. And when I talk about the core, I'm talking about obviously Francisco Lindor. Absolutely. That's an anomaly. That's an anomaly because Francisco Lindor is going to be here to stay and he's the one that's been performing. But I'm talking about a guy like obviously Brandon Nimmo. I love Brandon Nimmo. He's had his peaks and valleys. And I, it was surprising to me to hear you say from an outsider's perspective that Brandon Nimmo doesn't get more kind of like hate amongst this fan base. He's a tremendous ball player. Um, and obviously he's got the contract. He got overpaid for what the market value was because at that time when he was still a center fielder, there was not many center fielders on the market and the San Francisco giants were preparing to offer him a bag until Steve Cohen stepped in. But also you're talking about Jeff McNeil. We're talking about a lot of these other guys like Francisco Alvarez, who's taken a step back this year, JD Martinez, who's obviously not part of this core, but was brought in here to be the supplemental piece. I don't think with what, especially the big fish, like you said, is Pete Alonso. Yeah. I don't think Steve Cohen and David Stearns are confident in this core, quote unquote, to provide what the Mets need to be a perennial World Series contending team. So therefore, in this offseason, I think the sky's the limit. The checkbook, whether it's Soto, Santander, if Corbin Burns somehow reaches free agency, I really do think that they're going to open up the checkbook as opposed to all the one-year deals that we saw with David Stearns taking, um, you know, over this team in the ninth what? hour this past <laughs> offseason. But also the trade value, too. Yeah. Building up this farm system wasn't just setting up the Mets to trade these guys at this deadline and rush it, you know, for a team that you weren't confident in. But this offseason, when you can perhaps move a Jeff McNeil, when you can perhaps move a Starling Marte who's entering, I believe, the final year of his contract, and you can pay off some of that salary and offload him to a different team and open up a roster spot, I think that there's a lot more wiggle room and a lot more time for David Stearns to be deliberate and deliver exactly what we need for this team. But I think it all boils down to your question of not entrusting Pete Alonso, who's been absolutely brutal, right, Compared yeah. to the expectations that we had coming in for him and also his clutch statistics overall, I don't I don't think this organization believes in him to get the job done. I think last offseason it kind of showed that a little bit. And like you said, they still have another qualifying offer on him for next year, too. So we'll see what happens there with it too. I, I the Nimmo factor for me is like you said, it's a terrible contract. In my opinion, it's an awful contract that you gave him. I I know you see him every day than, than I do, but he's still batting 226 this year. He's not like I, I don't know, like He's not getting the bang for the buck. He doesn't seem like a game changer. He's probably – I know he's a solid player. He had the game-winning home run on Sunday Night Baseball, I know, this year. But, like, I, I don't know. Like, he, that's where I would say that's where he would fresh me is, like, you're getting paid like you're, uh, like you're, you're a guy here, but you're not performing. And that's – I mean, I know he's third in your team in hits, and he does some good things. He's a, de he's a good defender. Um, I don't know. I think he deserves – just. I think he deserves some blame, too. He's your number two hitter. He's, I think he should be better than that. So – that's what I thought. Yeah. What are your thoughts on McNeil? You said you think he's gone, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that if the Mets get a team to bite, I think Jeff McNeil's out the door. I think that was a rush contract anyways, to be honest with you. Um, I really never foresaw him being a part of this future. I know the batting title and all, et cetera, et cetera. But um, if you look at at least the sensible fans in this fan base, they understand that Jeff McNeil has already hit his peak, right? Today's MLB with the way that Jeff McNeil swinging the bat, which is absolutely right now, he's swinging the bat nine day different than he was in the first half. He's turned into more of a gap to gap power 
as opposed to the slap hitter that he wants to be in the first half. But I think even still, with a couple of years left on his contract, it's more or less a team-friendly contract, especially when you take into account that Steve Cohen is going to um, take some of that off to whoever kind of bites on him. But when you take a look at the crowded roster that we have, it doesn't matter what Jeff McNeil does in the second half, right? I think that anything that he does in the second half is a cherry on top because I think that truly the Mets will try to find a deal for Jeff McNeil this offseason. And whether that means Luis Angel Acuna is going to play, a lot of people like myself aren't sold on Luis Angel Acuna. Um, whether that means he's going to play or the Mets are going to try to go out there and find another second baseman. Or if they actually truly believe in a Ronnie Mauricio to have a comeback and they, they have Ronnie Mauricio playing second base, depending on what happens with Pete Alonso, right? Because he can play second or third. And yeah. then a lot of people are talking about with Mark Vientos' resurgence, you move Mark Vientos over to first first base and Pete Alonso plays or Pete Alonso walks. There's a lot, like I said, this is a whole merry-go-round in the infield, depending on Pete Alonso. He's the start of this chain and what's going to happen. But bar none to answer your yeah. question on McNeil, um, if, if the Mets can find any way to offload at least a portion of his salary over the next two years, like I said, I think it was a rushed contract extension. I think they will take it to make room for another roster spot. It's interesting too with you guys like um, – <laughs> Like your your owner, you get that owner. He comes in, and spends the big bucks, right? So like immediately, your fan base probably changes a little bit with all that stuff, and the expectations kind of weirdly change with all that stuff. And it's baseball, isn't it basketball, uh, where you just sign two or three guys, and even then, it doesn't always work. So, um, like I said, you guys are in the you guys are in the thick of it right now. You're, you're you're it feels bad, but you're only two out. Like I said, there's a six wild card for a reason. You're probably not going to be having a great season if you're in the si battle for the sixth spot, anyways. But the D-backs made it there last year. The Rangers made it there as the sixth seed. So you never know how this is going to happen or how this plays out. Uh, you know, So we'll see if your Mets can hang in there with it. It'll be very interesting. You guys are definitely going to be the talk of the offseason. There's no doubt. Like You guys will be right there with it as talk of the offseason. Um, CP, 